Today we're going to talk about a lameness in chicks and what could be the causes. Hi guys, this is Cindy from Part-Time Permies. I do have a problem in a couple of my chicks right now where they, one has lost the ability to walk. Um, I noticed it this morning, it kind of fell out of the coop door when I opened the coop so they could come in the run out here. Uh, so I was a little, little concerned it might have been injured, but I'm not so sure that's actually the reason. Um, I also noticed a couple other chicks who weren't as bad, but seemed to have a little bit of trouble walking. So there are a few reasons why your chicks might lose the ability to walk, um, get some leg lameness or paralysis, and I'm going to go through those in this video. So I have had this happen before, may not be the same exact cause, because it was in a little older chick, it was actually in a <laughs> cockerel. Um, who was more of juvenile age. I tend to call them teenagers when they get to like at least 10 weeks old. And it was pretty much in one of those um, older chicks. And went lame, got worse and worse, couldn't walk. Ate and drank fine, seemed otherwise healthy, but we eventually put, we eventually put that chicken down um, I'll get into a little bit of the reasons I make different decisions on when to treat, when to not treat um, as well in this video. But if you want to see a link to that video, that was from a few years ago, I'll put it up at the end of this one so you can check that one out as well. This is the first year we're doing Freedom Rangers for our meat chickens. They're three weeks old and this is the group where I'm seeing, a, it was this morning I think three chicks that were showing some mobility issues. So there's basically five main reasons why your chicks might go lame. It could be infection related, it could be genetic, it could be a vitamin de deficiency or a toxin in the environment, or it could be a trauma, so an injury. So we'll go through each of these sections one at a time. There are a few things you wanna know and watch for. There's some things you could do about some of them, but you can't always fix all of these. So when to put a chicken down versus when to try to help them is a good thing to know about. Would you like some treats? Here we go. Sunflower seeds. So when you talk about infections, you could really talk about viral infections and bacterial infections. Um, most of the infections that can cause some lameness in young chicks is going to be viral. Um, the most common one that most people are thinking about is Merrick's disease and Merrick's is in almost every flock anyway. Some chickens show symptoms of it, some show nothing, um, and some will die of it. So it depends on the susceptibility of your chicken. Uh, you can get chicks that are vaccinated to Merrick's if you want to. My idea is I want the strongest chickens for my main flocks to survive um, for breeding. I just want them naturally stronger. The point in time where chickens are most susceptible and have the worst symptoms is really from about six weeks old to six months old. They do tend to show a progression of paral paralysis in one leg and then the other leg, and but they'll be eating fine, drinking fine, all of that. So it, is something that could ex very well explain uh, paralysis that you can't see anything wrong. Uh, Merrick's virus actually causes cancer and that is what causes the progression. It is a cancer of the nerves in the chicken usually starting the sciatica nerve which is why it impacts the legs and ability to move them but it can spread through the nerves through their entire system. And really the chickens with Merrick's they aren't in pain they eat and drink, so they're not, you know, starving or anything until the progression is such that it moves through the nerves and can affect paralysis of the neck muscles and other things. In that case, they can't reach food or water or swallow if they can, in which case they actually end up usually dying of starvation. So there is no treatment for this once they have it. Some chickens, again, won't show any signs of it, but those that do show signs often will progress to death. It's nicer to put them down than to let them go through that. Now, if you have paralysis in chicks that are under six weeks old, which is actually what I have. My chicks are only three weeks old right now. 
um, paralysis in chicks under six weeks old can have uh, another viral infection that's called uh, epidemic tremors. It does cause a condition where they lose the use of their legs, but it will also cause a tremor as they're trying to use those muscles. You can actually test this by placing a chick on its back on the ground, and as it tries to move, flip over, that stress of using those muscles will cause a tremor. This is another condition that is contagious, so you gotta watch the rest of your birds, isolating your birds, if you think it's something infection like this. This is also why I'm doing my chicken tours for the other flocks first before I go see the chicks. The epidemic tremors is uh, a progressive condition as well. There's no treatment for it. So again, you're better off putting those chicks down if that's what you think is going on. Okay, so a third condition that is viral that might affect your chicks it's actually a little more common, I believe in Europe than here, but you are starting to see it in the United States. It's something called Newcastle disease. And Newcastle disease is something else that you'll see in some chickens will have it and show no symptoms and some will show a lot of symptoms and die from it. So Newcastle does tend to have a lot of other symptoms. So I don't think this is what's going on for my chicks because they really don't have any other symptoms. These chicks with Newcastles, will have respiratory issues, coughing, goopy eyes, runny nose, and they'll have uh, you know, a paralysis that builds up in their legs, but the paralysis also affects their lungs, so they do eventually die from this disease. So it's another one. With these viral conditions, you just wanna put them out of their misery. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's you know what happens with those. Let's move on to something in a different realm, um, and that is, genetics. Hi there, there's a little sunny behind me. But another thing that might be affecting especially your meat breeds are some genetics. So the meat breeds grow very quickly and can have some genetic defects that can impact them. One of them is something called kinky back. It's basically a genetic defect that is a deformity in the spine and because that eventually pinches their nerves, it can cause a paralysis basically in the lower half of their bodies. So that is something that is progressive. Again, has no treatment for it. If you see it, you just put them down, but it won't pass through your flock. Although if it's a flock of meat birds or fast growing breed, they might actually just be susceptible to it based off of their genetics. If they come from the same stock, multiple of them may have that. So this one I'm not ruling out. We'll have to see what how they do. Now genetics actually could play a role in one other thing, one other category that we were talking about here, and that's nutrient deficiencies. Now you might not be giving them the right feed for a young growing chick, but um, nutrient deficiencies might also be because those chickens have something where they're not actually metabolizing or absorbing those nutrients very well. But this is something you might be able to correct. So this is one that has a little hope um, if you do wanna take action and try something to save these chicks. So the most common vitamin deficiencies that could cause neurologic symptoms like paralysis would be B1, which is thiamine deficiency, B2, which is riboflavin de deficiency, or vitamin E, or selenium deficiencies. Any one of these could cause a neurologic effect on the brain or on the nerves to the peripheral or the limbs, um, and might cause a loss of mobility issue. So this is something you can fix. You could get poultry vitamins at your, your tractor supply or other feed stores and oftentimes. So you pick up some of that, you mix it into their water and um, try to refresh that water every day. Make sure you follow the instructions on the bottle for it and see if it helps your chickens. And if it's impacting some of your chickens, like this is my meat flock, they're fast growing. It could be a, a deficiency for them because they grow so fast. This is, these are Freedom Rangers. Um, they're not as fast growing as your Cornish Cross, and I've never had this issue with my Cornish Cross in the past.
but if it's a vitamin deficiency, it's correctable. So we are going to try this uh, with my meat birds because I want as much meat as possible out of them. This wasn't something I was going to try on that rooster or the cockerel from a few years ago, mainly because I want birds who can forage and get their vitamins and nutrients successfully, who can absorb them, and again, as far as survival of the fittest goes, I'm not going to breed a rooster that had a vitamin deficiency issue as a chick because I believe that would pass on to future generation potentially and um, could cause issue with the flock as a whole. So last time I did not try this for that reason because I just didn't want to keep a rooster. I was, that wasn't going to be a bird I was going to keep around anyway. Next category of things that might be impacting the lameness or mobility issues in your young chicks would be toxins. So toxins are basically things they'll get from the environment that are not contagious, could impact more than one chick if it's in their food source. Um, so it is something you have to watch. There's a few different things that you want to watch on, for toxins. Um, botulism may be one. Uh, you think of this when you're thinking of canning and in safe canning methods. You don't want botulism growing in your canned food. Well, the thing is, if it's in a anaerobic, anaerobic environment, it could breed botulism toxin. And this is actually bacterial growth that is anaerobic, and it is something that would cause nerve damage to a person or a chicken. This probably isn't an issue for my chicks because they're on dried food, um, they get fresh water every day, they aren't really getting anything that would be uh, in an anaerobic environment. It might be an issue if you're soaking your feed, uh, depending on how long you're soaking it. Now most of the time, your good bacteria are gonna outgrow a botulism in that short of a window of time, so that's not necessarily going to be an issue for that. That's like how you ferment food. But it is something you have to watch and it's a possibility if you have a botulism uh, toxin in the food source. Other toxins could be plant-based. If you put your chicks on pasture and you have some poisonous plants in there and they don't necessarily know which one's which, um, you know, if they eat nightshades, that could cause a problem. Uh, my thought with my previous one was that it might have been Amanita mushrooms that we have every fall. I have had this issue in the fall before when the chickens are on pasture and there were mushrooms coming up in the area where I had those chickens. So um, something that causes nerve damage that's a toxin, it could be an issue. So that is something to keep in mind. Heavy metal toxins are another issue that could cause nerve damage. So if you have heavy metals in your water or in your soil, that could be an issue. If That could be an issue for you as well. So if that's a suspicion, you might want to get your water checked and your soil checked to make sure there's no heavy toxins there. I doubt that's an issue for me because I've run chickens through this coop so many times no other issues. That would be something that would build up over time in those chickens and my older hens don't have an issue there. Okay, so the last possibility that I can think of that could cause lameness is of course injury. And injuries might be healable, it might not be. They could be something like a chick that has a slip tendon. Now that usually happens at days old, not weeks old, so I don't think that's what's going on. It could be a chick that got stuck in the doorway. I, that could have been uh, injury related for that one chick if I hadn't noticed some lameness in a couple other chicks. Broken bones, dislocated hips, all of those things might explain obviously some lameness. So checking out to make sure that it, nothing feels obviously broken, that the hip socket isn't like out of place or something, or the hip isn't out of the socket, uh, would be things to check. I did check those things this morning. It doesn't seem to be the issue for my chick, but it is definitely worth it. And those are things that might be fixable depending on what it is. You could splint breaks. You might be able to splint a dislocated hip back into place. Not sure on that one, I'd have to look into it, but injuries might be correctable. Definitely something you'd want to isolate that chicken just so they have that ability to not get picked on by the others as they heal. Okay, so let's go check on the chicks. 
I haven't checked on them since this morning, so hopefully they're still alive. And what we'll do is give the whole flock some uh, vitamin supplements mixed into their water and see if this helps anybody out. They are loving it outside. Now I do have some weeds in here. Mostly these are uh, edible things. I haven't noticed any like nightshades or anything in here. This is like lamb's quarter and things, so they're eating that. If there was something that I missed, that could be the issue for a couple chicks if they eat it. Most of this flock is healthy and active. You doing all right over here? Yeah. He didn't like being upside down. No, he had no problem turning over though. Okay. So, again, sitting back on the hawks is one symptom of some of those vitamin deficiencies. So, something we'll watch here. How are we doing in here, guys? Looks like most of them are moving around right here. We'll go take a look from the other door. Okay, let's take a look at these guys inside. Anybody under here? No, under there. So heat sources if they need it. Oh, look at this guy. Oh boy, he's looking a lot worse. I know, I know, here we go. Sitting in poop. But yeah, look at those legs stretched out like that. That's not a good sign. Flip him over, he's going to have tremors. No, he just can't move. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So again, spinal defect would be unfortunate if that's what it is in these fast growing breeds. That's the one that's worse off. And you're moving around a little bit, but you're looking a little wobbly maybe. Anybody else? I thought there were three this morning. Yeah, look how hungry you are because you can't make it to the food. Okay, let's get them some vitamins in their water, see if it helps. So what I got over at Tractor Supply was Dervite, uh, Dervet vitamins with electrolytes. We're going to follow these instructions. This one also came with a little scoop, pre-measured, that you, one scoop per gallon of water. Now these are quart size, so I'm gonna do a quarter scoop, basically, approximate that per um, container here and dissolve it in there and give it to all the chicks because if some of them have some issues with this, others might as well, just cause again, it might be in their genes, it might be their growth is so quick that they need more vitamins than they, what they're getting from their food blend. It is a uh, starter grower food blend, so it is for the sage chicks, but maybe they just need more because they're faster growing birds. We'll do quarter scoop, maybe slightly under because they're little, but I'm going to try to estimate about a quarter scoop per container here. Dissolve it in there. So I'm covering the hole with my hand, my thumb. I'll shake it up. Now I might take that immobile one and isolate it and do the same thing with its water. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to check on that and see how that one's doing. The others are all still mobile, so. Um, I'm going to say if there's a viral infection in this flock, it's in all of them at this point, not much I could do. So I'm not going to worry about isolating them except for the reason that one chick can't move and if it gets picked on, that's a problem. So we'll see. Okay guys, here you go. Let me turn you towards the water for a little bit. You've got a good crop full. You can feel that crop. Oh, that leg. Yeah. Water. Yeah, you're thirsty. Again, they're not in pain. It's not an injury. That's just hard. Okay, get the leg under you. There you go. Drink some water. Probably a girl. I think she's smaller than some of the others. Okay, we'll check on you a little later. 